Hey guys, what's up? It's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be doing my vlog and review of the Percy Jackson series. This is something that has taken me a week and a half to get through, so pretty easy to get through five books. Um, I really enjoyed them. Percy Jackson and the Olympians is a series of middle grade fantasy by Rick Riordan. Rick Riordan? Ah, I don't know, so bad at names. And all of these books are so incredible. I have never read them. They've been out for years and years and so I finally took the deep dive, bought the set, and I've been reading all of them. I love them so much. I think they are so sweet. They are so interesting. All of the characters are you grow to love them so much. And so like a series like Harry Potter, you really get to see Percy, Annabeth, and all of his friends grow up and develop as young adults as they go from 12 years old to I believe 16, 17. So I think it is a really incredible series and I really enjoy all of the books. I think my favorite has definitely been book three. I think that it's just a really interesting story. I really grew to love all of the side characters and I think one thing to note when going into this series is there is a lot of Greek mythology that is what the books are really based off of is Mount Olympus and all of the major and minor gods and I think that the development of the world is really great. In the first book or two I didn't really know if I loved it and that may be something to do with the discrepancy between middle grade fantasy and adult fantasy. Adult fantasy the world building is so extensive and almost confusing because of the intricacies of it. Whereas with middle grade you do get a lot more straightforward information just because of the audience that the books are intended for so that way no one is too lost in all of the jumble of the world. I really like it. It's kind of an urban fantasy but also more high fantasy. It's kind of somewhere in between I would say. I really like that. I'm not a big fan of urban fantasy, but I did really enjoy this series. Like I said, Percy Jackson and his crew of people, Grover, Annabeth, even Clarice and Tyson are all really wonderfully developed as the series goes on, and I recommend this series to anyone. I'm 23 and I just read it, so I don't think you have to be at the middle grade reading level to read these books. I think they are something that you can take something from even at my age or older, and I just can't recommend them enough. So at this point I'm going to jump into the vlogs and my reactions real time of what I'm reading and my thoughts and so I am just going to dive into those and there will be spoilers in this section with my little vlog moments so please keep that in mind if you choose to go ahead. I tried not to spoil the big end plots but as I read and you get through the other books some stuff is kind of spoiled just inevitably but anyways I hope you guys really enjoy so let's dive into the vlogs. So just an update I am a few chapters in now and this book is definitely middle grade I don't know why I said like it's like middle grade young adult maybe as they get <laughs> get going the writing is like really simplistic and really easy to follow um I'll probably get like a quarter to halfway through tonight just started reading it it's like 10 p.m so we'll see how far i get but so far it's cute i like it i've seen the movie and so i'm kind of vaguely familiar with the plot but i know there's going to be a lot of stuff that i don't know so i'm excited to see how the characters progress so i've only been reading for like 40 minutes today i'm at page 110 i'm kind of reading slow i'm sorry my tea's not kicked in yet but I'm getting so annoyed because it's so obvious that Percy's the son of Poseidon. Like, it's so clear. And he just, it's not clicking. And I'm like, bruh, he just poured water all over his head. And he's like, instantly I felt refreshed. And instantly the sword felt better in my hand. I'm like, dude, like, how is it so difficult for you to see this? <laughs> so I just wanted to share that thought that I was having. <laughs> So it is now like, I think 10.30 in the morning. So I've been reading for a couple hours. Um, I'm over halfway through book one and I really like it. It's cute. Like, I love the little, little witty remarks. They almost remind me of like the Office TV show era, like cringe humor, which makes me really happy because that's my, that's my kind of humor. So I've been really loving this book so far and I'm excited to see how it ends. I thought I would take like a week for each book but I'll probably finish this today, <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, I have to go run some errands, hence the, the actual clothing on today. 
Um, but when I get home, I'm probably just gonna keep reading. But I love Percy so much. I love Grover. I think he's my favorite. And um, all the characters so far have been really interesting. I think I remember in the movie what like the big plot twist of book one is. Um, but I'm not 100%, but I have some some assumptions that I am making and some predictions. So I will see if those come true. But for now, I am just off to the store. So I'll talk to you guys later when I check in tonight about how the book ends. Okay, so I just finished the first book and the plot twist was what I was thinking. It just happened way later than I anticipated. Um, but it was good. I really liked it. I think that... The action was pretty straightforward, like all of the fighting and like the potential war and all that stuff. I feel like it could have been a little bit more like drawn out and intense, but again, for middle grade, I think it was a really good start to the series and I'm planning to start the second book tomorrow. So the journey continues. So I'm about four or five chapters in to book two, The Sea of Monsters and so far, I really like Tyson. I think he's really sweet. He's just this little cyclops that needs love. So, so far I'm really loving it. I don't know if he's like the big cyclops that's going on here or what that's gonna be later on, but I'm really liking this book to start. Um, I feel like it's so sad for him because he didn't make it through an entire year without getting expelled or without causing a scene, but that's just the life of half-bloods I guess so I'll check in again later tonight this book is way shorter than the first one so I think I'll probably also finish this one today so I'll just check in later and let you guys know what I think so checking in on book two I am almost halfway through now and I ended up watching rain and working on some character development for my novel so I did not end up reading really at all today, except for this morning. I read like one chapter just now, but I'm so exhausted. It's almost 1 a.m. So I'm going to go to bed, but I'll probably finish this tomorrow morning and I will check in again. But so far, so good. They just got to the cruise ship. So they are on the Princess Andromeda and they are sailing off on their next quest which is very exciting. So I am curious to see how things go and how Tyson, you know, shakes up the duo into the trio and when they run into Luke again and all this stuff. So yeah, I'm excited to see what is to come, but I am like truly exhausted. Hello, I am back checking in. It is the end of the day on Friday and I've got my lovely little anime posters up above me. I have just finished, well, a little while ago, I finished Sea of Monsters and I accidentally kind of spoiled the ending a little bit for myself by reading the last line before I started the book. I don't know if I mentioned that yet. And so once I read the end, it like wasn't as much of a spoiler as I thought it was going to be, which was nice. I really enjoy the story. I freaking, Tyson is so sweet and I really like him. I think that he was a really awesome character and I love how he ends up at the end of the story, how he is going down to be with Poseidon to work in the forges as we learn that Cyclops is working in the forges. So I'm really happy that we get a happy ending with him. Yeah, and it was just really interesting. I think it'll be so cool to see how our newest character that popped up appears in book three, which I think I'm going to get a head start on tonight and then just work through work through tomorrow. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I was trying to find my phone and I couldn't find it. So I was running all over my house, but time to start number three, which is the Titan's curse. Let's see how many pages this one is. Um, it is 312. So these books are all pretty short. It seems, um, the first book was the longest. I think it was like almost 400 pages. This one was 280 and then this one is 312. So they're pretty short, so they are really like day long reads. So I definitely think I'll get through these before my work week starts again next week. So that'll be cool. So yeah, I'm hoping you guys enjoy seeing this video whenever it goes up. But yeah, so far doing good, feeling good about this series. I'm excited to rewatch the movies after I finish them all just to see the characters and see if they truly are botched. <laughs> Hello everybody, I am showered. My hair is still drying so the cast is still kind of there so sorry if she looks greasy it's just gel <laughs> um so and excuse these as well but acne's real it's there anyways i am 
halfway through book three on Saturday. It's like 3.30 now. Um, I'm about to sit down and just finish this before I go and have a D&D &D session with my boyfriend's family. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the plan today. Um, again, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Thalia or Talia yet. Um, I'm hoping she kind of makes up for it. I think that Artemis is like such a cool character. I love that she's portrayed as like a young woman, a young maiden, um, kind of before the age where you get really boy crazy and interested in guys or girls or whoever you like. And so I think that it's really cool that that's how she portrayed herself. I also really like Zoe. I want to know her backstory. I want to know why she and the general don't get along, why she and Thalia don't get along. And so I'm excited to see what happens. And also the oracles thing about one of them perishing by their parents hand. I want to know who it is. So yeah, I will check back in when I finish it. <laughs> Bye. Why hello. Checking in again. Um, I don't know what time it is. It's probably like 7 p.m. I just finished book three after taking like a nice two hour nap and I changed my mind. I like Talia. Thalia. Talia. I'm gonna call her Talia. I thought she was great. I liked Zoe. I loved learning more about her family and her past. Um, Percy just kind of develops further. It ends on a positive note. Um, all of the twists and turns in this book I was not expecting. I did not see coming. I loved the prophecy and how it was foretold and how it came to be throughout the story. Um, seeing all of the gods together at the very end was very interesting. Um, how they talk about there being like a council meeting and things like that. <laughs> Bessie, so cute. I'm like trying to imagine what he looks like. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely, in my opinion, the best book so far. I think I'm going to give this one probably four and a half out of five stars compared to the other two, which were like solid fours. So yeah, on to book four. Hi loves, excuse my ridiculously insane hair today. I brushed through it and this is what you get. <laughs> I am reading, I'm like almost a hundred pages into book four. I took like a four and a half hour nap today. So I did not do like any reading. I just read for like an hour this afternoon before I passed out till 7.30 p.m. So it's like 11 now. So I think I'm going to read for a little bit. I'm waiting for my partner to get home. And then I think once he's home, I'm just going to pass out and then read more tomorrow. I think that's the plan. So yeah, I'm excited to get through this book. I think I'm getting a little, um, not restless, just a little, I think, run down with the series just because literally all I've been doing is reading the series and like I've been working this weekend so I've had a couple days off so I'm just reading 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 and they're good I think I just want something like a little more like mm, but we'll get there after this book I mean so far it's so good the battle of the labyrinth I've heard has been one of the most liked books in the series I believe and so that'll be cool too get further into so let's carry on reading shall we so I wanted to check in before I freaking finish book four because I'm literally about to well I've got like 70 pages left but so I'm at the point where Luke got the string Quintus is Didalis excuse me Mrs. O'Leary came to save the day and I'm really excited I want to know what happened to Grover and what happened to Tyson. I've been thinking about those two and I want to know what happened. Um, and Nico, such a badass. There's like his best line, honestly. This freaking 11 year old child. I am the son of Hades, Nico said. Be gone. Minos laughed. You have no power over me. I am the Lord of Spirits, the Ghost King. No, Nico drew a sword. I am. Oh, this child. I was, I literally read this line and I was just like, oh, my son. I think seeing his growth just from after his sister and him were found to now, like he's really grown thick skin. He's maturing a lot for his very young age. And even seeing the dynamic between like Rachel, Annabeth, and Percy is really interesting how Rachel got kind of thrown into the mix here. And I'm really glad her character had like 
a true purpose. That's one thing that I really like is that the characters that we kind of meet offhandedly in like the book previous become so critical to like the next book in the series, which I really enjoy. I appreciate that these side characters aren't just like thrown in just because and then they're forgotten by the end of the book. All of the side characters so far have wrapped up really nicely, whereas some of them, you know, have died. Um, there have even been mentions of them, like when Zoe died and she became the Huntress constellation and then the constellation was mentioned in book four after she had died in book three and like all this stuff. I really like that there's like little moments where you see all the strings come together and so I'm really excited to literally finish this right now and so I will make another video in like probably 30 minutes when I finish so freaking Briars oh my gosh he came to save the day and so did day Dallas I'm so happy literally shed a tear I don't know if you can see you probably can't see it to like the people that died but um war be like that Wow, sorry guys, I'm just having an emotional night with this book. Like the very end, he smiled. And at that moment, just being in the kitchen with him was the best birthday present I ever got. It's freaking cheesy Percy Jackson, oh my god. Ugh. I love these books, I'm sucked in. I'm sucked in. Literally two seconds ago, I just finished book four. Um really good I would say it's probably on par with book three I'd say the first half of it was a little a little slow but I did really enjoy it of course as it went on I loved all of the monsters and creatures we got to meet Mrs. O'Leary and Briarus Briarus I think is what I've been calling him the hundred armed man and like Oh, so freaking cool. And I think that learning more about Nico and Nico so quickly coming into his powers from Hades is like a little frightening. Granted, Percy also came into his powers really quickly. So I'm wondering if that like immediate natural instinct and natural skill comes from being a half-blood of the big three or if that's just something that automatically comes naturally because of course Clarice has skill of course Luke has skill of course you know Annabeth has skill but I feel like their skills are more mental or physical but their skills that are like very well developed and studied and researched while I feel like Percy and then even Talia and um Nico's skills are a lot more organic and just like right from the beginning very intense and overall I really enjoyed this I really enjoyed the labyrinth the twists and the turns I have to say the battle scene at this book towards the end when the army fighting with for the titans invades the camp that is one of the best battle scenes I've ever read I feel like it was so vivid we saw little chunks of different situations happening all at once it didn't feel so long and drawn out that the amount of work going into battle was unrealistic sometimes battles are kind of drawn out to the point where I mean you swing a huge bronze sword like seven or eight times and you're exhausted like that takes a lot of work and so I appreciate that it was giving us kind of snippets of different situations going on in the battle to keep, you know, the excitement and the tension. But it wasn't like just focused on Percy, just focused on Annabeth, just focused on this person or that person. I like that there was enough variety to where you could see how quickly people could take out opponents and how quickly they could fall, how quickly people could get injured. And they were just out. They were no longer able to fight. And I think that that was very honest and a very realistic portrayal which i really enjoyed i think that nico coming by at the end getting a little blueberry blue birthday cake not blueberry just the blue birthday cake was really sweet i feel like poor nico is at like freaking rough go like he doesn't belong he's just this he lives with the ghosts like if he's chilling that's cool but like i feel really bad for him and annabeth and the tension i think it's so interesting that when percy goes to calypso and he finds that Aphrodite is giving him all these romantic challenges that was mentioned in their meeting in book three but now he's really dealing with it he had three different girls that he's like ooh about and like I think it's really interesting and I'm curious to see what happens in 
the fifth book. I appreciate that we got a kiss in this, but it was literally just she kissed me. It was like no graphics. That's how we know it's a middle grade. It's just it is what it is. It be what it be. And then it carries on. But I thought it was really interesting to see. I really like Rachel and I think she has a really interesting dynamic. I feel like there's something else to her. Like there's something that's missing and I want to know what it is. And I know I'm going to start the fifth book like right now. It's only I think like 10 p.m. So I can get through a couple of chapters but yeah I think these are like videos are gonna get a little bit more in depth as I go because I think I'm just starting to get like more invested I think it took till like book three for me to really get invested in these characters like I said I think um the story was kind of slow in the first two books not slow but just with middle grade I feel like the world building isn't as um confusing and all-encompassing as with young adult or adult fantasy so that you kind of get the gist of everything pretty quickly so you don't take the time to really like absorb and you know attach yourself to the characters in the same way as you would in well, young adult or adult fantasy but I feel like now that I'm a few books in I've had the time to invest and understand these characters and their growth I am invested and I really like them and so I'm really stoked to start on The Last Olympian. I hope I get some reading done because I'm sleepy. So yeah, this is where I end this. But book four, I would say also four and a half stars. Very good. Hello. So I am like 100 pages in to the last book, The Last Olympian, book five. And so far, so good. Very sad about Beckendorf dying right after he got the girl. Like Nico and Percy are currently with his father-in-law and his mom and they are base or stepfather I'm sorry and they are they just got the mom's blessing for whatever they have to do they're about to go into the underworld through the dwarf Orpheus and I want to know what this like big crazy thing is that Luke apparently already did that will make him ready to fight I guess um so so far the book started off okay. I mean, it started off with, like, a big love triangle with, like, Rachel and Annabeth and him. And, like, obviously he likes Annabeth um, and he just, like, enjoys being around Rachel. And so, but I think he knows Rachel is valuable, so he doesn't want to, like, push her away. And I think he's curious about her, but I don't think it's, like, a romantic curiosity. And so I'm doing this constantly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, so far those are my feelings. And, like I said, I'm about 100 pages in. Probably gonna try and get halfway done and then go to sleep. I'm back to work tomorrow, so I have to kind of balance the reading and the work life. But it's a very short shift, it should be fine. And I'll probably read this in the morning for a bit before work and then like as soon as I get off. So that is currently my plan. Very excited about it. So on to more reading. So. I am at like page 150, 140, 141, and so he literally just became like invincible in the River Styx, like okay, also like destroyed all of Hades' men. I'm now more curious about Nico's backstory and why Nico is like the strongest half-blood. Except for Percy now, because Percy just on the river six and is invincible like Achilles. Nico is literally the most intense, strongest, most powerful, most naturally capable half blood besides him. Why, oh why, would you ever tell him to just stay in the underworld? I get like wanting Hades to maybe turn sides or convince him, but I don't know what's gonna happen. So I feel like having him fight for your cause would be a good idea. I get his uncertainty, but I think that was a bad move. I am like two thirds of the way done now and admire my bar cart, yes. <laughs> and my flowers. Anyways, I am two thirds of the way done with book five right now. And so he just, Percy just saw the dream about what happens to Mae Castellan, who is Luke's mother, as well as what happened to Luke as a child when he was traveling with Annabeth and Talia. And 
it makes a lot more sense and I'm understanding what's going on. I want to know if Luke understands everything that happened or if maybe Kronos twisted his head to make him think one way or another. Um, I thought Prometheus coming in was a very interesting, very good touch and how he was trying to sway Percy's opinion. And so right now they're just setting up for the big battle at nighttime and I'm sure this will kind of bleed through till the end of the book. So I will give my updates then. But so far I'm really liking this book a lot too. It may also end up being like a four and a half star by the time I'm done, but of course that depends on the ending. So I will let you guys know what I think when we get there. Hello people, I just thought I would update. I'm on my way to my dad's house to have dinner with him and my sister, but I have like 50 pages left. The war has been brewing. Oh my God, freaking, I knew Selena was the spy. I kind of like knew it. Um, I didn't get why she was still helping after Charlie died, but it, it kind of made sense. Um, if like Luke was threatening her and stuff, but like all the things that are being revealed about the backstories, I'm like so happy we're getting this information period because I think it really helps tie it, of course, everything together. But I'm also really glad we're getting this information in the fifth and final book because I think if we had known all of this from the get-go, we like, I don't know, I feel like the suspense wouldn't have been as intense. All the like stuff we now know, how they've evolved as people wouldn't make as much sense. Or I feel like we would have already kind of collected that information and kind of expected it. And so I really like that this is where we're getting presented this information. Um, but it is dangerous for me to do this while on the freeway. So I am going to say bye, but I will respond later tonight when I have finished the book. <laughs> okay. It's done. I have a lot of feelings. I kept making these like, oh my gosh, sounds while well, my boyfriend and I were watching TV and he kept looking over at me like I was crazy, but it's okay. Like I said, I have a lot of feelings. So Luke is the hero. Luke literally stabs himself in his own Achilles heel, which ends up being Annabeth, which is a really good twist, which I, can believe like I could have seen coming, but I did not. And I'm very excited about it. For some reason, I really thought it was gonna be Nico. So very happy with that and the way everything was executed. I, again, I think the battle scenes were really well written. I feel like Rick does a really good job at just depicting things in a realistic way, showing the exhaustion. I think it was a little less believable now just because there were like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of like evil demons and creatures and there were only a couple dozen of the demigod fighters but other than that I really enjoyed all of the war scenes and the battles. I think that of course in the end with Annabeth everything that happens between them is very sweet and again it just kind of checks that box. I did not see Rachel becoming the Oracle of Delphi. I thought it maybe a little bit in the beginning of Everything in like the middle of the book, I would say, when I was probably two thirds of the way there, I could see it happening when we hear the story about Luke's mom. But I think that Rachel becoming this makes a lot of sense. Again, it ties up kind of loose ends with her character. And I just really overall loved it. I'm really curious to see how the new prophecy comes to be. I don't know if that's what the next series that he wrote was about or if that is what it entails or what, but... I'm really excited. I think all of the rewards and the praise that they received from the gods were awesome. I love that they're making all these temples and shrines to the lesser gods. I think that was really important and really significant. And again, it literally just tied like everything together so well. I don't really like the typical like wrapped it up in a bow nicely, like perfect ending where everything gets kind of tied off and good to go. But I really appreciated it in this. I think it was a perfect way to end this series and that way he can branch off and have all of his other series. And if they want to relate back, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. But yeah, I would probably give this like, probably, yeah, four and a half out of five stars. I recommend.
Thank you guys so much for watching my vlogs. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know. If you guys like me and seeing my face and want to see more of it, please feel free to subscribe right down below. Turn on the notifications so you know when I upload. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.